Hi there, and welcome to John Jacobs Studio. We are art restorers and art consultants, and in this video we're going to be restoring this rather lovely painting of some Highland cattle. And you can see it's got a rather old damage on there that's been poorly restored. It's restored with some lumpy permanent paint, and you can see how bad that damage is. And it's got a sort of ghosting over the whole surface that would have to be cleaned off. And here's the damage from the back. You can see it's been repaired several times, different types of tape. There's a price down there, £20, and the title is On the Way to Falkirk Cattle Trist. So it's a historic painting uh, to do with the Highland cattle moving between market to market up across the Highlands, and it looks like a previous owner's address is there as well. So I'm just starting off by trying to remove some of this patch, just what I can get off loose, just to see if I can see anything. But it doesn't seem to be coming off that easily, so I'm just getting off some of the bits and bobs that come off easily. And then I'm moving on to cleaning the face. So I'm cleaning the face with a water-based solution, a dilute solution of ammonia and water, uh, because it, there's no, I don't think this is a varnished picture, there seems to be no sign of varnish, so it is just surface dirt and grime probably some uh, tobacco and various sorts of dust and you know, years of just essential build-up of grime and it seems to come off quite nicely with this water-based solution. And then we come to the damage. Now the damage is interesting because this is done, well it's got to have been done by an amateur because this is permanent paint and I can't get it off in any way so the only thing I can do is scrape it down a bit and try to get off the paint and reveal some of the paint underneath because it's been overpainted quite dramatically and it's very lumpy. And then I could turn over to the back and I'm trying to get the rest of this patch off using water. So I'm just slowly soaking it off and gradually removing uh, the paper bit by bit with a scalpel. And then with some common wool water, gradually soaking it and rubbing it off. And eventually it does all come off uh, nice and easy. But it just takes a little bit of time to do this, a bit, a bit painstaking. And then the damage, of it, after examining the damage, it seems to be in fairly good condition. Uh, the damage is not over overlapping in any way. So I can just the damage again and um, reinforcing the damage with PVA adhesive and some tissue paper and this will just bridge across the damage and hold it together um, very strong it's actually very strong as PVA adhesive and tissue paper but I will be also applying a patch on top of that uh, towards the end of this uh, process as well and now we're just varnishing the front so we can see the colours and you see how the colours are coming up now I could do a lining on this picture that is reinforce the whole painting by sticking it onto another material this is called but we're trying to do a minimum intervention, so I, I'm just going to try and improve this damage as best I can so I can leave the painting unlined as it is. And the way I'm doing that is just some aqueous adhesive on the front, water-based adhesive, and then I'm, I'm, I'm sticking some tissue paper across the front, and this is called facing, so I'm facing over the damage. And this is going to help me do a treatment to level this lumpy and rather wavy damage and, and see if I can improve this and get it level. So I've got a, it's a tricky little job to do, get this tissue paper on. I'm trying to get it on without any wrinkles, as smooth as possible. And I've got to make sure it's rubbed down nicely so there's no air bubbles in there. I need a good connection between the tissue paper and the surface of the paint film. I need a good adhesion because this also protects the paint film. Because this is the treatment I'm going to do, there is a risk involved. So without this tissue paper on the front, there's a risk of softening the paint and the paint flaking or falling off. And once that tissue paper on the, on the front is fixed, I can turn it over and the damage is now dry and I can tear off all the excess tissue paper around the damage because we don't need that and we, we don't want this loose tissue paper hanging around. We just want the damage to be reinforced in the minimum way possible. So just tearing this all off and, and the last bit, get off very carefully with a scalpel, scratching it up to the edge to make sure there's no loose bits hanging around. We've just got simply the glue and the tissue paper that bridges across. And in order to do this treatment, we've got to use, I've got to use some moisture. So I'm using moisture. This is going to soften up the canvas a little bit, soften up the damage. And so this is just straight up water. But I'm trying to carefully to avoid putting it over the glue. So I don't want to soften the glue anymore. I just want to soften the canvas around the glue. And then a metal plate in there to, so I've got a nice hard surface so I can work against because I'm going to have to uh, press down this damage and work this damage. So I need a strong support to do that and an extra board nice and strong. And then what I'm doing now is I'm using, the, I've got the dampness on the back, a little bit of dampness on the front, and I'm using the hot air blower, hot, hot air, together with a, a spatula, a rounded spatula, and I'm 
gently starting to massage this damage down and see if I can get it level level. And I've got a side light, a special light that I shine across sideways and this allows me to see the level of the canvas to see what I'm working with. And it takes a bit of time but here you can see now it's getting better and better. It's nearly level, just working it slowly and carefully massaging it. Trying not to get too much heat, I don't want to get it too hot because like I said there's a risk of heating up the canvas and paint when there's dampness involved. This is very risky so I've got to be ever so slow and ever so careful. There's a certain amount of skill involved. But as you can see, it was getting much and much better, it's much, much improved. And I just look at the back to check the back, and everything seems to be fine. But this little support I've got in the damage is not quite enough. I need to put a bigger patch over the whole thing just to support it a bit further, bridge it across uh, so that the canvas is supported across this damage in a better way. And I'm using here this is glass cloth, so it's essentially fiberglass material with a beaver adhesive, it's called beaver, B-E-V-A. And it's a special adhesive, it's a reversible adhesive, you can wash this off, and soak it off with solvent, or even just heat, warm it up and peel it off. So this is very strong fiberglass material with this uh, um, uh, reversible specialist adhesive, beaver adhesive. And, and the beauty of this is I can just iron it on. And I've got to, again, I've got to do it carefully. I don't want really to get the canvas too hot, just hot enough that I can soften up the adhesive and stick the patch down. And I'm not using much pressure, just very light, very light touch to warm it up and then cool it down straight away with a cold iron and hold it flat, making sure it's nice and held down, nice and level. And this will also help to level the damage a little bit further and hold it down. And now once that's all there, everything is dried off nicely, I can remove the facing and this of course is water based, so just soak it with water and very carefully peel it off. Again, you've still got to be careful because you never know, sometimes some paint has got loose and the paint comes off. So I've got to do this very carefully, pull it slowly, keep an eye on it. But in this case, everything, and mostly it always works very well. But occasionally there are, there are risks and then and it has moved the paint, so you have to do this very, very carefully and slowly. And then wash off the excess adhesive because we don't need that anymore and, and rub out from the, the damage so I can see what I'm working with and we'll be able to move on to the next stage and you can see now here it's looking already a lot better a lot a lot better you can see the damage but it's not so lumpy anymore and now I've got to still fill some more so there are, there are uh, quite a lot of, of dents and holes in the damage so I'm filling this with again a water-based filler and I, want, I scrape it on with a palette knife making sure I'm getting it into all the nooks and, and, and crannies but then it's a slightly painstaking process just to wash off the adhesive around the edges so I can see what I'm working with. And once that's dry, I can level off the heat, the, this filler with a cork. So it's a nice smooth cork, a tiny bit of moisture, and I just rub small circles. And this sort of rubs the filler deep into the, into the damages and levels it off. And when you wipe it, you can see where the original paint is. And, and all that's left is the filler nice and deep into the damages. And then I just keep on going very carefully, wash off the excess filler around and around. And again, it's a little bit painstaking, but it's worth it. And once that's all dry, I can apply a bit more varnish because this area has been affected now and you can't quite see the colour so well. So I just add a little bit of varnish on this area that I've been working on so we can see uh, what the colours are supposed to be and this is going to help the restoration process. You've got to be able to see the colours that you are matching when you start applying new colour. And this goes over to Sheena now so Sheena is starting to do the restoration. And the restoration is, is a, again, a sort of painstaking process. It's, you, you might think of this as an artistic endeavour, but it's really a bit more forensic than that. We're not painting uh, as an artist, we're painting, uh, we're trying to create an effect, we're trying to match the brushstroke effect done by the artist. So this is a bit fiddly and, and it requires some skill, and you go through very carefully, dot by dot, spec by spec, trying to look at the brushstrokes of the previous artist and, and sort of fill in the missing parts on their brushstroke match their style. So it's not really um, painting, it's, it, it's more like we're painting an effect, you're creating an effect. And, and again, one of the principles of restoration is you try not to go over any of the original paint, you try to do absolute minimum intervention, just put the colour on the missing areas only, and gradually, gradually restore it and match the colours around it. And you do that, again, the glazing, uh, the colour, whatever colour you get, sometimes it's not right, but then you come on it again with another colour, slowly glazing and building it up dot by dot, spec by spec, and line by line, and you can see it's gradually disappearing, and now you can sort of see what the picture might have been properly before, the, the farmer there just standing in the grass, um, and you can sort of see what he's actually doing, he's standing there, there's something in his hand, I can't be sure exactly what it looks like, it's in 
makes it look a little bit more sympathetic to the original canvas. And this will dry and matte, uh, and so you'll see it, won't see it so much. And here's the finished result. So you can see it's turned out beautifully nice, the colours have brightened up. So we've varnished it again, it's had a couple of sprays of varnish also. And this is what it was like before, you can see how dull and grey it was, how, how ghosty this surface was. And this big lumpy damage that you can't really tell what is going on in that area. Now at least you can see what's happening. There was a guy there, a farmer there, looks like there's two other farmers in the background. Okay, uh, uh, shepherds, uh, no not shepherds, what would you call them? Whatever they are, these guys who, who were walking the cattle along. And the nice sheepdog in the front. <laughs> I'm calling him sheepdog, there's a cattle dog in the front. Anyway, it was a lovely painting to work on. And now you can see the patch in the back. It's sort of blending in more. And it, it's, it was really a lovely piece, a very historical, beautifully painted. You've got some lovely perspective in there. And you can really feel the energy of the cows. And this is a photograph, so you can just see the colours a bit better. And it does look nicer when you get a better quality image of the painting. OK, I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed this process. Stay tuned, I will be producing more of these uh, bit by bit. So stay tuned, they come now and then as we get the work. So thank you very much for watching, look forward to seeing you the next time.